Hi, welcome once again to Math as a Second Language, where we'll be taking a look at base 5 arithmetic. And uh, I thought that a nice way to introduce that would be in terms of the odometer. The reason I say that is students sometimes have trouble because they confuse the numeral 5 with the number 5. And so what happens is I want people to be able to see that on the base 5 odometer, you only see 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, because the next gear that comes up is the 0, and every time the 0 comes up, it clicks the next gear by 1, and as a result, all you're ever going to see in base 5 arithmetic are the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the people who live in that system will still know what the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are, only they're not going to call them 4, 5, 6, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. They've never seen those digits. They don't need them. Any more than if uh, we were dealing in base 10 and we saw something in base 12. For example, what if we traded in by 12s? You get up to... You get up to 9, you're not going to trade in until you come to 12. So this would still have to be a single digit. Let's call that T for 10. The next one would be E for 11. And then you would see the 1, 0 now standing for 12. We don't miss seeing the T and E any more than the people in this system miss seeing the numerals 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So let's see what would happen on the base 5 odometer. On base 10, you would see 001, 002, 003, 004, 005, 006, 007. On base 5, everything would look the same up until we got to 004. What would happen on the next mile, the base 10 odometer, the 4 would turn into a 5. On the base 5 odometer, you see, what happens is the 4 turns into a 0, and that clicks the next gear, so we see a 1. And again, don't read this as 10. It's 1, 0, a 5, and no 1s. 1, 1, a 5, and a 1. 1, 2, a 5, and a 2. And 5 plus 2 does equal 7. So in other words, what would the number line look like in base 5? See if you can follow this. You count 1, 2, 3, 4, now you're trading in 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. After the 4 comes the 0, this moves up by 1. And by the way, you can check this. What would 2, 0 mean in base 5? It means you have no 1s and two fives. That should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in the same way that we learned to count, the youngster in base 5 would learn the same way. Only his numeral system would be different. And if you said to him, how much is 3 plus 4, he would say what? Well, I have 3, and now I'll add on 4 more. See, he's, going, he's walking the number line. 1 over, 2 over, 3 over, 4 over. And what we're really saying is, I should put the annotation here, that if you're trading in by 5s, this is what? A 5 and two 1s, which certainly does add up to a 7. What would 3 times 3 be? Well, let's see. We have one group of 3. Let's take another group of 3. Let's take another group of 3. One group of 3 plus another group of 3 plus another group of 3 is 1, 4 in the base 5 system. Let's see if that checks out. In base 10, 3 times 3 is 9, but 9 is also what? A 5 and 4 1s. So if this is already starting to look a little bit strange and you have to learn to count differently and you find yourself inadvertently calling this 15 instead of 2, 0, you're starting to get a feeling as to what your students are going through when they're trying to learn the tables for the first time. Using this device, counting over, etc., the same way as we learned, you would then learn to memorize the tables. See, and again, these are, these are the tables. Nothing very tricky about that. Uh, notice a few things that happened. Remember, in base 10, what was the greatest single digit you saw? A 9. 
And what was the interesting thing about nine? A number is divisible by nine if and only if the sum of its digits are divisible by nine. What's the greatest single digit in base five? It's a four. So a number is divisible by four if and only if the sum of its digits is divisible by four. And take a look over here and uh, see what you see. Zero, four, one plus three is four, two plus two is four, three plus one is four. All the same kind of properties that you would see in base 10. You just memorize these tables, okay? And so, for example, let's suppose you were called upon to add two, three, I, I, maybe I should put this whole thing like this, so you see it's a, it's a base five problem. Two, three, I'm not gonna read this as 233, this is 233, and I'm adding that to 144, and I want to know what the answer is. And using the tables, this is just as mechanical as we do the problem nowadays by rote. What would you say? 4 plus 3 is 1, 2. You can't say 12. Put down the 2 and carry the 1. 4 plus 3 is 1, 2, and the 1 that you carried makes this a 3. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4. The answer is 432. 432, not 432, 432. This is what the odometer would read after this many miles. By the way, didn't we do something called the same sum problem, where if you add one to one number and subtract one from the other number, the sum stays the same? Same thing happens over here. Look at the 144. This is one less, the four is one less than the trade-in value. If I add one to 144, I say what? One plus four is zero one, put down the zero, carry the one. Four plus one is zero one, put down the zero, carry the one. One plus one is two. So what I could do is, I could, instead of writing 144, I can add one onto it and call that 200, zero, zero. take one away from this guy, so instead of being 233, three, he becomes 232. Two. Now I add him up, same answer. And now you can also get kids, when they're learning to do this, to also practice their base 10 facts. You say, okay, this is what this answer means in base five. What problem would it mean in base 10? So you say, okay, 233 three, base 5, let's do it in terms of money. You have $1 bills, $5 bills, $25 bills, 525s is 125, so you would have what? 233 three, three would mean what? You have 225s is 50, plus 35s is 15, 15 plus 50 is 65, and three more is 68. So 233 three in base 5, names the same number as 6-8 names in base 10. What does 144 represent? 144 means you have 125, okay? That's 25. And 4 times 5 is 20. 25 and 20 is 45. And 4 ones makes 49. So the problem, is, so adding this problem in base 5 is the same as adding 68 and 49 in base 10. What would the answer be in base 10? It would be 117, right? 9 and 8 is 17, carry the 1. What, what is 4, 3, 2? 4, 25 is 100. 3, 5 is 15. 2, 1 is 2. So it checks. See how much arithmetic the student is doing while I think it's fun for them. In fact, and this is a very subjective statement, I think different number bases would be more fun for the students than it is for the long-time teacher because the longer you've been doing something a certain way, the more entrenched it becomes. The youngsters have relatively, uh, I shouldn't say clear minds, but they're not cluttered. They're young. They can absorb new material because they don't have to undo anything old. They might find this a very interesting way to deal with place value. That was what the hope was supposed to be in the new math. When they said what happened again was because people didn't understand why different number bases was important to be stressed, it basically degenerated into people being given a problem, say, in base 5. They would translate 
from base 5 into base 10, get the answer in base 10, and then translate it back into base 5. Sort of the way you learn a foreign language. If you're learning a foreign language, let's say it's conversational, the teacher asks you something, a question, in the foreign language. And what's the teacher expecting? The teacher's expecting an answer in the foreign language. But you're not comfortable with the foreign language, so what do you do? In your mind, you listen to what the teacher asked, you translate it into your language, still silently, in your language, you translate the, you take the question that you've translated, answer it in your own language, and then out loud, you translate your answer back to the language that the teacher was speaking to you in. Bilingual is when you hear the question in the foreign language, answer it in the foreign language without having to refer back to the translating into your own language first. I just thought that's kind of an interesting analogy. Uh, and just thought I'd pass that on. And, uh, and I think that's another reason why I call this math as a second language. It's amazing how much, how much math can be simplified just by translating uh, abstract symbols into words and then later eliminating the words because now you know what it's supposed to mean. At any rate, to go on a step further to help you appreciate even more what the students are going through, let's take a base that's closer to base 10. How about base 9, where you trade in by 9s rather than by 10s? Now you'd have to learn, this would be your number line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 2, 0, blah, 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 etc. You think that would be kind of easy for you to assimilate? And how would this work? Let's do 3 times 4 in base 9. It means you're going to take four groups of, three groups of four. So here's one group of four, here's another group of four, here's another group of four. So in other words, what happens here? 3 times 4 in the base 9 system is 1, 3. Let's check that out. In our system, 3 times 4 would be 12, and the 12 is what? A 9 and 3 ones. What would 4 times 8 be? Well, now you would take four groups of 8. Here's one group of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's two groups of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's three groups of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's three groups of 8. So four groups of 8. So 4 times 8 would be 30, 3, 5 in the base 9 system. Notice, by the way, up until you get to the trade-in value, the 3 in base 5 means the same thing as the 3 in base 10. It only comes into play when you have enough to trade in. Now, what's 4 times 8 in our system? It's 32. And... How would you represent 32 here? It's three nines, which is 27, and five ones, which brings it up to 32. So if you really think that kids have an easy time of this, see how long it would take you to assimilate the multiplication table for base nine. I just wrote it out for you. And again, notice that in base nine, the greatest single digit is eight. And notice that if you look at the bottom line here, all the multiples of eight, the sum of the digits is divisible by 8. Same as for base 10. So in other words, if this was a base 9 problem, using the tables, let's see, 7 times 4. Here's 7 times 4, that's 3, 1. Put down the 1 and carry the 3. 7 times 3 is 2, 3. And the 3 that you carried is 2, 6. 7 times 2 is 1, 5, and the 2 that you carried is 1, 7. And now do you start to get the feeling that maybe things can be a little bit complicated? We, as I may have mentioned once before, we tend to confuse that which has been acquired knowledge for so long with something that's self-evident. And so what we think is self-evident really has been something that was not so self-evident when we first learned it, but as, acquired, it, as it became acquired knowledge and we became more and more familiar with it, uh, we suddenly said, hey, this is pretty easy. Well, it's not that easy when you go back to square one and see what the youngsters are going through. I just thought this might be a nice sort of cathartic effect so that you can see that there is 
an awful lot to memorize and how difficult it is if we don't do it with understanding. But once again, this brings us to our favorite part of the course, not because we like the pro problem, but because we know that once we come to this part, the lecture is almost over. And uh, here's the uh, practice problem for today. And remember that what you're supposed to do is pause the video, do the problem, and then come back and watch what our solution is. And here's the problem. Assuming that the addition below is correct, what number base was being used? You have 263 plus 426 equals 711. And the question is, what's the number base? And actually, this is one you could almost answer by sight. What clue do I have that the number base has to be greater than 7? What happens in base 7? The number that we write as 7 appears as 1, 0. So the fact that you see a 7 means that you haven't traded in yet. So the base has to be greater than at least 8. At least 8. Now let's look over here. So, so far we know it's at least 8. It can't be 9, because if it was base 9, 6, 3 would be 1, 0. See, in base 9, what is 3 plus 6? It's 9. So what must you be trading in by if there's still one left over after you've traded in? If, if, you've, if after you've traded in, there's still one left, you must have traded in by 8. So not only is the base at least 8, the base is exactly 8. And because the lecture has already, I think, gone long enough, I won't verify that this works, uh, will translate correctly in base 10. But you're certainly welcome to, invited to see what you do get if you trade these numbers into base 10. And again, notice how much drill you get if youngsters were working in a different number base and then had to convert to base 10 to check to see if it was still correct. In other words, the sum of two piles of tally marks doesn't depend on how you're trading them in. In other words, the number in a pile does not depend on the order in which they're counted or the way in which they're grouped. And I guess that brings us to the close of today's presentation. Hope to see you again next time. Have fun, study hard, and as I said, see you next time.